Today, we're gonna to make a birdshot encrusted hog hunter. But first, let's look at this really nice hammer made by viewer Brad Cardwell. He custom forged this and sent it to me for free. And it's a pretty sight, man. If you wanna get in touch with him about a custom hammer or tool, check the description below for his email. I'm not even sure I can bring myself to use this. It's so pretty. All right, let's talk attempt number one. There were several attempts made at this. The first being this birdshot 1084 steel core kukri. Now note there's not gonna be any powder in the canister, just our steel core in the shot. I think that's gonna yield sort of a cooler pattern. And things went pretty good here. Check it out. There's several takeaways here. The first is that although our shot looks pretty cool, I want something a bit finer, so smaller shot is on the way. The second is that the birdshot exterior and steel core sklooch splatutskied during the quench cleaving my cleaver in half. So <laughs> I'll be differentially hardening the blade to minimize stress along the spine and prevent more splits next time around. Here we have eight shot instead of seven. My canister is gonna be laid out. Let me show you its features. The canister is coated with titanium dioxide to prevent sticking to the billet. Our core has a guide welded to it on the end to keep it centered in the canister so it's centered in the blade. In addition, I'm gonna put some steel foil in here just to make sure our billet doesn't stick even more. Our bibbies are gonna be soaked in acetone and the canister construction will begin. That's right, I'm gonna put a piece of paper in here. That's because there's a lot of extra airspace between those BBs. It's not filled up with steel powder in this case, so we need to get rid of that oxygen by burning it up with this piece of paper. That way it won't cause oxide formation to interfere with our forge welds inside the canister. Canister is brought to forge welding temperatures about 2200 degrees, then everything is pressed together. Yeah, it's pretty cool, it might have worked. Let's cut off the end of the canister and check things out. It looks pretty good, everything is much more solid appearing with the smaller shot, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's remove this canister and see what our billet looks like on the inside. We're going to start forging, but I'm going to cut in part of the tip instead of forging it. That area gets very thin and a lot of distortion there can really 
shift the center, our core center off and make it very difficult to get back in track. So I don't want to do a whole lot of forging on the tip if we can avoid it. Like I said, normally with Sanmai, I wouldn't want to do a whole lot of forging to shape, but my goal is to keep the blade fully encased and shot and to have this forge finish on the exterior. So I won't be able to grind on the spine, for example, to assist in shaping the knife's final profile. So we just got to get that done on the anvil as much as possible. All right, for this hog sticker, I want a longer blade, but before any more forging is done, I need to make sure we know where the steel core is along the edge. So I'm going to grind off the edge, etch it, and find the core, and then grind away some of the surrounding material in an effort to, to make us more aware of where the edge is and help us keep it centered, especially as we look at forging the blade out longer into our final dimensions.
We're going to take one more peek at our steel core here as we enter the final stages of trying to forge the blade straight. The spine has to be straight and our thin strip of steel core has to be straight and there's really just not that much margin for error. I'm going to show a few clips of me trying to straighten everything uh, but in reality this took about 45 minutes. It took quite some time for me to, to get this all done. It's sort of a long knife. Well, this has been a giant game of whack-a-mole. I would like to keep the forge finish along the top of the spine and here and along the sides. And so it makes things really hard. If you want things uniform thickness here, every time you hammer a profile in and hammer to shape up here to shape the profile, you upset the width here and vice versa. Every time you flatten that area down to make it uniform, you push this area up and the, the profile changes. And so, and then, and then you're hammering in down here and you're pushing things back and then you have to push them back down and things are curving and warping. Yeah, let's build some shoulders next. Go Steve, it's your bur- I remember we learned that there's some risks in doing a full knife quench here. So let's put some furnace cement along the spine as if we're going to put a homone in here, although there won't be a homone. And we'll harden just the spine and not the edge and see if we can relieve some of that stress during the quench. Cool. Hmm, all right, let's get this thing tempered. As you can see, it's nice and golden. That quench oil was a medium speed quench oil instead of the Parks 50 I usually use for 1084. I'm sort of trying out the medium oil. Again, that will also reduce things like fractures in this case. So as you can see, it moves a lot slower and the oil didn't get the knife below its flash point temperature as quickly as Parks 50 does, which is why it caught on fire when I brought it out. I'm just not used to holding in the oil that long. You can see on this fit up that the steel shot forge finish sort of peels away instead of flaking. It's sort of interesting. I'm not sure I like it. And it causes some issues with the guard fit up. I toyed with putting this brass, whatever you call it, around the blade at the guard instead of chasing my tail with the peeling forge finish, but decided I had no real way to, to fixate that brass piece in place. So I just went back to the mill and took my chances on redoing the shoulders. By the way, the garden spacer are darkened with this cold bluing stuff. You know, it works okay. It provides a bit of an uneven patina in some cases, but I think for this, it looks pretty good. What do you guys think? I really like this finish. I think I'm going to use this some more. It's, it's a great way to sort of uh, bring something extra to a hunting knife or something like that. So this is going to be a keeper in my repertoire. Maybe I can perfect things a little better in the future, but it's all right. Hey guys, quick reminder, it's pretty well known by now, but whether it's content creators, social media companies, mega corporations, or even foreign states, they are all enriched when they make you angry on your iPhone. When you look at the information you're being served, remember that. <laughs>